Hello, and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing and home recording studio design. My name is Wilson Harwood, and I am a soundproofing expert and studio designer based in Nashville, Tennessee. On this lesson today, I want to get a little nerdy with you guys and a little technical, but on something you're probably interested in, which is how do you calculate the airspeed of a soundproof HVAC system for your home recording studio, or if you even want a home office where you don't hear the air blowing through the system. Ironically, I'm actually doing this video right now in a bedroom as my studio is being sold and we are in the process of buying a new home and I can hear the air right now. You might even be able to hear it even through the rejection of this SM7B mic, but it is a problem when we are in a recording studio. So this is a very timely <laughs> video for me here. Um, and by the way, if you hear that air, uh, just notice that it's part of uh, the topic of this video. So if this mic is picking it up, um, that's what's going on. So how do we design these soundproof duct systems so that you don't have that problem, so that you can't hear the air being shot out of an, a supply register? That's what I'm going to teach you today is the way to calculate that, some of the basic rules we follow, and some of the basic design principles for creating soundproof uh, HVAC systems and reducing airspeed. All right, let's dive into this lesson right now on how to calculate airspeed in your HVAC system. Woo! Okay, so one of the main things, it all starts from understanding two main topics. One is we're gonna need a certain amount of cubic feet per minute, or if you're in the metric system, that is gonna be liters per second. Um, depending on which system you're using, but I'm gonna stick with CFM, meaning cubic feet per minute of volume of airflow into a room. And we're looking usually at understanding, okay, how much CFM do we need? That is different though than the feet per minute or FPM, which is a speed. So we have volume, the amount of air coming in and out of our rooms, and then we have feet per minute speed the speed of that air traveling in and out of our rooms. And when I say in and out of our rooms, I'm talking about a supply register and a return grill. And in every sound isolated room, we're gonna wanna have both because the room is airtight and there's no way for air to transfer. So whatever air comes in, we don't wanna have a negative pressure buildup where all that air is gonna get stuck in that room and start putting pressure back on the system. So we need the return duct as well. So just a side note there, that's how this whole work, system works in general. So let me show you that there is, are certain ways to calculate this, but we need to understand a simple rule right before that, which is the feet per minute, the speed of the airflow generally, the very, very top end that we can never go above in my designs is 500 feet per minute. And this is, you'll, you can read that in the, the handbook of, Master Handbook of Acoustics. Um, this is a, an agreed upon number, 500 feet per minute. But I like to stick with the Roger Weiss method. He talks about this in his book, Home Recording Studio, Build It Like the Pros. He says he doesn't like to go above 300 feet per minute and ideally we'll keep it much lower if possible. So in our designs, we're playing this game of trying to keep our feet per minute, our speed of air below 500 and ideally below 300. In my designs, I actually use 300 as the cap and I only go to 500 if I absolutely, absolutely cannot get it any slower. So let me show you how I calculate all this and this will make some more sense. So let's jump onto my computer and I'll show you how this works. Okay, so here we've got um, my CFM calculator. And what I wanna show you guys is that this is the square footage of the room and I just picked 400 and then the ceiling height I just put in 9.5 and that's giving me a total volume of 3,800 cubic feet. Now disregard this four people number over here, we're not gonna look at that just yet. So this number right here is telling me the amount of CFM I need to properly heat and cool uh, that this room right here. And the, the formula behind that is going to be the total volume times six divided by 60. And that's a standard formula used to configure the uh, CFM needed to get six air changes per hour in a room based on the volume of that room. 
So I use this a lot when I'm trying to figure out the CFM for a studio room. For example, if your studio was 400 square feet and it had 9.5 feet uh, to the ceiling height, I would use this to say, okay, in our plans, we're gonna tell the HVAC technician, we wanna have a maximum of 380 cubic feet per minute coming into that room, and I don't want you to design it higher than that. And you can use a series of dampers and different systems to achieve that 380, but it's up to the HVAC technician if you're using your built-in HVAC system to make sure that we don't go above the cubic feet per minute. Now, let's talk about speed, and that's why I've got the Duculator right here. Ductulator.com is where you can go. I use this tool all the time. And what we want to do is set in our airflow rate first. So remember, our airflow rate should have a maximum of 300 feet, uh, sorry, I did that backwards. Our airflow rate is 380 CFM. So we're gonna type that in. We'll just actually put it in here, 380. And then our maximum air velocity, or velocity is another term for speed, is going to be 300. The static loss, 0 0.08 is great. You could put it to 0.1 if you want, but it doesn't really matter for these calculations. Um, so we can see here that it will automatically start to give us some sizing to keep the feet per minute uh, at the right speed, to keep our 380 CFM at the right speed to deliver the same amount of CFM, but keep the speed under 300 feet per minute. So we can see right away that, and this is where a lot of studio or home recording studio designers get really stuck, is that you would need a 16 inch round duct to keep the speed under 30, 300 feet per minute. And that's pretty big, that's really big actually. Then you would need a 16 by 12 inch um, to keep the speed to 285, or you could do a 20 by 10 or a 24 by eight. Now notice you can always change these and you can get different numbers. So we could say, oh, what about a 12 by 16? Sure, that'll work, or a 12 by 14? Nope, pushes it over. So you can see pretty quickly that Depending on the size of your room, your airflow rate may be large enough that you're going to have to use very large ducts to keep the feet per minute of airflow below 300. So that is the challenge that we face when designing these rooms. This leads to another point that I have learned doing this for the last several years of designing these rooms is that I prefer actually to use a ductless mini split for my heating and cooling. The reason is that it's ductless. There's no airspeed involved. So our high levels of CFM needed to heat or cool a room is now negated. The system is actually very, very quiet. And I've used one for years in my own studio and it was great. Then we can use a smaller system with a lower CFM for the ventilation system. Now remember, you cannot have a duct ductless mini split and get fresh air in and out of the room. They just don't provide fresh air. So we need a separate system using an ERV usually that would bring in fresh air from the outside into our studio and pull stale air out. And that system needs to be ducted and will have a CFM airflow as well. Let's talk quickly about that because that is another aspect of the whole system that you need to be aware of when it comes to airflow. So let's dive back into those calculators here. Now, if we come back to this calculator, you'll notice that there's two components. I have the ability to check out what the overall heating and cooling load calculation is, but I also have this number over here that says max number of people. So let's leave it at four for now. Let's say that you are designing a single room recording studio and on average, the max number of people you'll have in there would be four people. You're not looking at having 10, 15 people in the room. So if we look over here, I've created a bunch of different systems for calculating air changes per hour. Uh, sorry, different systems created for calculating the CFM needed for proper ventilation. And you can see that there's a lot of discrepancy between the IRC, which is the International Residential Code, the ASHRAE, which is the American Society of Heating and Cooling, and then you also have the IRC using a different method based on the CFM per person. And then the ASHRAE as well creates a much higher number. And then finally you have method three, which is using just the air changes per hour method. 
which is honestly the, the most conservative, uh, or I guess I should say the most liberal because it's a very low rate, uh, small amount of CFM for your ventilation. So you could kind of use any one of these and potentially hit a semi-accurate way. However, I have leaned on this method, which is just taking the total number of people um, and multiplying it by 30 here. Um, but actually, I would say what I've liked to do uh, recently is really just doing 15 CFM per person is honestly one of the ways that I've preferred to do my own calculations, which is not even on here. But you can see that there's a lot of different ways to kind of capture the idea. This one is, oh yeah, the IRC is the 15 uh, uh, CFM per person rule. So that's the International Residential Code method two. Um, and this is the most uh, conservative, meaning the most amount of airflow, uh, depending on the number of people. So you might be wondering, well, why don't I just go with the lowest one? Because then the CFM is going to be extremely low and my duct size doesn't have to be as big. And you're partially true. However, there's a reason why this might not be the best and this might not be the best and this might not be the best uh, method of calculating ventilation needs for your home recording studio. And let me explain why uh, here. The reason is that the other methods, the methods that have a lower CFM are actually referring to your typical residential home. And if we think of a recording studio, it's anything but your typical residential home. It's usually a very small space. It usually has a lot more people in it than a normal home would. And it's airtight, meaning it's extremely, extremely tight and air cannot get in or out of that room whatsoever without having a ventilation system in place. You also have to think about that this is a very active environment. People are playing drums, they're jamming out, you're rocking out. If you're doing band rehearsals, people are sweating. So there's a greater need for ventilation than your typical home, which imagine this, let's say you have a 3000 square foot home. Yes, pretty nice big home. And you just have four people living in there. That, that need for ventilation is spread out over a much larger square footage than the calculation based on the four people who are in a small small control room style room in a studio. So I tend to use the 15 CFM per person rule because I've decided that in my opinion, that's the, the best bet. We could go to 30 CFM, but I find that that's a little excessive and it makes my duct sizes way too big. So I've kind of figured out this system that works really well. Uh, some people might say, hey, that seems like you're oversizing your ventilation system. I say it's good to oversize it and you can also turn the speed down so that you don't have to use it at full speed all the time. That's just my uh, advice to you. So let's take a look at how you would size your ventilation system so that you have the correct air speed in your ducts. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll figure this one out. So let's dive back into the calculator for a second here. So if we look over here with our example of four people, you can see that 60 CFM would be a good range um, for your system. But let's say you wanna do like, you know, 10 people. And then you're getting up to 150 CFM. So if let's say you have a live room and a control room, I would say that you probably wanna size your ERV or HRV or ventilation system in general to have a maximum ability to provide 150 CFM per, per, uh, per requirement so that you have 15 CFM per person uh, when you have 10 people in the room. And remember, we wanna design these for the max load, not necessarily the average load, but if you're gonna have you know 10 people in the studio even once a month, you still wanna have the ability to ventilate that many people. And then, like I said before, you can actually get these systems where they can dial it down automatically depending on the number of people in the room. But once your system is at peak, it can't provide any more air. So you wanna design it accordingly. So let's, 150 is usually the amount that I, I use for most of my systems. And honestly, I'll tell you guys, I use the Brone, um, the Brone ERVs right now uh, this 150, actually it's the energy one. This one right here is what I've been using. The model number uh, you can see right here if you guys are interested. So just uh, you can definitely decide if you wanna use this or not, but this is what I spec in all of my studios right now. Um, it's a great one, a little more expensive than some of the cheaper ones on the market, but I think it's worth the money. So let's go back to this and say that we're using this system here. 
and it's providing 150 CFM max. Now remember, that's the maximum. This thing could potentially hold less or do less. Um, read this right here with a selectable, selectable airflow speed range from 35 to 150 CFM will meet the needs of most medium to large size homes. Again, we're not a medium to large size home. We're a very unique, different system, which is why I explained that whole thing at the front end. Um, so what we want to do is then go to our ductulator and say, okay, let's try 150. Now you're going to see right away that we can reduce it down to a 10 inch duct if we want. We can do a 10 inch by eight inch rectangular duct and achieve these speeds. And you can see you could even get it down to a 12 inch by six inch duct and you can hit that 300 marker. Now, if we wanted to go lower, you know, we can always do that. But I just want to show you that your ability when you separate these systems out to get the speeds that you want is much easier in confined spaces where, you know, a 12 by 12 inch duct is still fairly large or a 12 inch round duct is still fairly large. Um, if we go back up to 300, a 10 inch round duct is even still kind of on the larger side for residential ducting sometimes. So that is sort of why I build my systems the way I do. And I hope this helps you understand what the difference is between feet per minute and CFM. And then also just understanding how to calculate feet per minute now after watching this. So that was a very nerdy and technical lesson on understanding airspeed in HVAC designs for quiet rooms like a home recording studio. So like I always say, you know, if you want to do this yourself, you definitely can. All the information is on the internet. I have taught you everything I know on YouTube. You just got to find it and watch it. But many people come to me because they're like, I've done everything and I still have questions and I still don't feel confident that I can do this right the first time. And I might waste tens of thousands, if not more money trying to build this studio on my own. If that is you, definitely reach out for a soundproof clarity call. Just go to soundproofyourstudio.com, click on the I want some construction plans button, and you can sign up for a free 30 minute call with me and I will see if we're a good fit. And I can also just help you get some clarity on your vision for your room in general. If you're not quite there yet, I highly recommend checking out my free soundproofing workshop. It is 30 minutes of in-depth teaching going over how to build a recording studio, either in your garage or your backyard or your basement. Uh, even if you're not trying to build a recording studio, if you want to build a soundproof office or a very quiet space for any reason, you will find this extremely valuable. To watch that right away, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. Again, my name is Wilson Harwood. I am a soundproofing expert and studio designer based in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. And I look forward to teaching you more about room acoustics and sound isolation next week. Same time, same place. I'll see you all later.